Hey y'all, this is Chris Hicks and welcome to the Southern Rock Insider. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe and click the notification bell. It's time to rock Southern style. The Southern Rock Insider. One of the first projects I played on at the Capricorn Studio when I moved here in 1969, I believe it came up within that first year, uh, there was a guitar player here named Johnny Jenkins. And he had been... He had started out was with Johnny Jenkins and the Pine Toppers. Back during the 60s, they'd play a lot of shows, uh, fraternity parties and all in Tuscaloosa. And, and I heard the story I heard that Otis started out being their bus driver. And uh, anyway, they Johnny had sort of just sort of leaned back against the stump and was taking it easy when we moved to Macon. And uh, Phil always wanted, always believed in Johnny some way. And, but Johnny... He wouldn't fly. He wouldn't get on an airplane for nothing, especially what happened to Otis, I suppose. And um, Phil couldn't get Johnny to do anything. And so, and he wouldn't, he tried to convince him to come in the studio to record an album. And Johnny wouldn't come unless he said, unless he, he said give me some cash. <laughs> and uh, every day before he'd come in the studio, he'd do like that right there. And Phil had to, He'd have to cross his palm or something, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot of those guys, man, they had been taking advantage of so many times over the years and playing the chitlin' circuit and all that stuff. And they got used to being short chains, and they just thought, show me that money, you mm-hmm. know. Anyway, he he would come in, and um, at that time, Jerry Wexler had gotten into New Orleans music and voodoo kind of stuff with Dr. John and they put a big push behind Dr. John. And so they, they needed a new image of, of Johnny Jenkins instead of just some mole blues player, you know. And so we, they, they suggested we cut Walk on Gilded Splinters, which had been a Dr. John song. And, and then Jackie Avery wrote a couple of voodoo-oriented things and Johnny wouldn't play. He didn't want to play on it. So we, the studio band, we we went in and cut on this stuff. Then they bring Johnny in, and and uh, he would uh, they <laughs> he would say, "Okay, I, I'll say that." <laughs> so he 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 put vocals on some of it, and uh, he didn't. Most of the stuff it was he was singing phonetically, like "Boom, Gilly, Gilly, come, come, walk on." You know, so he didn't want it meant. And so, but you know, we got the vocals out, out of it. And, and uh, I remember one of the first re- reviews I read that came out. He didn't like it when it came out. And, uh, and they, they said, yeah, they had me singing in Spanish. <laughs> he said, I don't know about this, man. I don't know no Spanish. And actually, it was Creole French and stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, the Auburn Brothers would come in. Back in those days, you know, there wasn't anything else to do in Macon, and there wasn't that many bands. So Allman Brothers Band would wander through, and we'd wander through, and everybody else's sessions, and it was pretty in, musically incestuous back then. Whoever happened to be in, ta- in, in the studio, hey, hey, man, come play a lick on this. You know? So Wayne wound up playing on some of it. He'd just be there that day. And I think uh, j played some congos, and maybe Butch played on some stuff. It just happened to be in, no really thought to it. And so when the record came out, or maybe when it came, maybe the re-release, it had Butch Truck, j in our studio guys. You had to read the fine print, you know. So a uh, little publicity kind of thing going on, you know. But they just sort of came in and added to what we already had done. So anyway, that's how the Johnny Jenkins thing came about. Hey, Chris Hicks here from the Southern Rock Insider. I'd like you to hit this button right here and subscribe. Or I'm coming to get you. The Southern Rock Insider.